Welcome to The Putting Couch. This is episode 44. Uh, the Putting Couch is brought to you by Seymour Putter Company's tour team. I'm Jim Grundberg along with Cody Hale and Ted Galena. And today, guys, we're going to talk about all the different ways that golfers can enhance their putting practice. Training aids and, you know, we, we are the tour team. We travel the tour. I don't think there's one player on tour that on a weekly basis doesn't at least spend some time using a variety of training aids. Is that kind of what you see out there, Cody? I do. Uh, you know, and I think a lot of your better putters are doing something consistently with some type of training aid to give them proper feedback or to recalibrate each week and just make sure that they're not getting too far off and stay inconsistent with their process. So we do see a lot of training aids. Some are more in depth and intricate, you know, and then there's others that are simple that just give you, you know, very, you know, systematic feedback on your eye position, your setup, you know, alignment, things like that. So, um, but yeah, I think we see a lot of great putters on tour and most all of them have some type of item on the green to helping them get a feel for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you break it down, really, there, there, there's, you know, there are several different parts of the putting game that they work on and Absolutely. a lot of times they'll they'll really break it down one at a time right mm-hmm. they'll they'll work on their speed there so there's speed drills they'll work on their reads so there's sort of read drills some of which um you know one of which comes to mind where uh you know the golfers take a ball and they kind of roll it down a chute and they're actually not even putting they're just watching the way a ball that's consistently rolled down a chute um, rolls at a certain speed. So they're working on speed, they're working on break, they're working on their stroke, right? They're working on keeping the face square and mm-hmm. they use strings, they use tees, they use mirrors. Um, they're working on their posture and their setup. So there's sort of something for everything out there, but it does seem like a lot of times the tour players will separate sort of what they're working on. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a mechanical practice and then like a performance based practice, right? So they, you know, when they go to their mechanical practice, they may not be working on, you know, uh, you know, they may, may not be working on four things at once. And I think, like you said, they may be working on set up and, or uh, aim and start line. And then they may do that for half an hour. Then they may do, you know, some stuff work with balance and posture. And then they may go do some speed control drills. Um, so there's, you know, I don't think you try to couple all that together. I think you got to be careful when you, when you are working, you know, be, be focused on one or two things and make sure you're doing okay. that right. And yeah. then move on to the next thing before you, you know, don't try to do 10 things at once out there. Cause that's, you know, your, your brain's going to be trying to process yeah, yeah. all those. And yeah. you really, like I said, I think you got to break it down into a couple different, you know, uh, a couple different areas. And that's, I, I think mechanical practice is when you have your, a lot of your training aids down and then your performance practice is when you're trying to execute that. And how do you put it in play and then take it to the golf course? Now you, Cody, you were an accomplished junior player. Then you played in college. Then you played on tour, uh, a lot of different tour events. Uh, what, like, how did that progress for you? Like how did, like the, how much time and, and what percentage of your practice time was on putting at the various parts of your career and what, knowing what you know now, you know, what would you have gone back and done differently? A lot. <laughs> I, I needed some guidance. Question. I needed some guidance. I would have probably spent more time with a process versus just hitting a lot of putts. I think for me it was, you know, I I hate the term feel players. Everybody uses it, but that's pretty much how I grew up. I was never technical. I, okay. I, I just hit shots. My mm-hmm. dad had me mm-hmm. hit shots on the green or hit shots on the golf course or on the range, different seeing visualization um, was a big part of it. And then we go practice, do a lot of drills that you make a lot of putts, but never really, never really a, a huge process okay. to it. I think that's what progressed as I went from junior golf yeah. to collegiate golf and then trying to play on yeah. tour is, you know, you, you have to be more systematic. You got to use your time wisely. I mean, if in there's so many great players, you really have to be specific with what you're doing. And so I think my later years in college, I started to understand that, put a lot more time on you know, the short game inside of 100 yards and obviously putting. So, you know, I think the goal was if inside 100 yards and putting, if we could spend 75% of our time on that, then, you know, that's where most of our strokes were. You know, the driver wasn't going well that day. You had to pitch out. You might get it to that number you like, get it inside 10, 12 feet, give yourself an opportunity to keep the rounds going. And so you, you practice with that in mind as you, you know, you go through your routine you know, working on distances and how you're controlling those distances, 
on the putting green and on the short game. And then, you know, seeing yourself make a lot of putts, confidence is a huge part of it. So if you're going to do a lot of drills, we, we try to do stuff that where you're seeing yourself make a lot and then you're doing a lot of speed control yeah. drills that allow you to at least get it in that circle where you're going to be more effective. You bring up a great point, you know, talking about the, I mean, 66% of the game is 100 yards and in. And your putting certainly improves when your wedge game improves. So, yeah. you know, the, the two are really, really tightly wound together. As you said, you could be having a bad day with the driver. You could be flaring some of your approach shots. But if you can get that wedge working, you know, it, to the close to the hole and to the proper side of the hole, the putting starts a lot easier than, than in other situations. No question. And, and there's not really a stat to say, okay, well, you know, a straight uphill putt is, you know, it's 50% easier to make or whatever. But you look at the probabilities and, and you say, okay, well, you know, if you're just looking at the tour, it's like, okay, if they're wedging it and they can get it inside 10 feet, just the average is, you know, around – whatever, seven feet, 10 inches is 50%. So you're giving yourself a great opportunity. Now, if you wedge it out there to 30 feet, that percentage goes down dramatically. So now you're putting a lot of pressure on, you're trying to hold that pot. And then if you hit it by, you got putting pressure on. And it's at all levels of the game, right? You're, you, you turn a 90 into an 85 pretty yeah. quick doing, utilizing that. And a lot of it takes, a lot of it is just putting more time into it, right? It's like put more time into it and then once you put more time into it, making your practices more effective. And, and we'll get to the aid part of it, but I think just in general, this discussion could help. Uh, I actually played three rounds of golf this weekend. So first time I've done that in a long time, feeling pretty good. Um, and it was at a couple of resort courses, you know, we were all playing it for the first time. And wow, I, a couple of notice, a couple of things I noticed about my own game and others is, is that, you know, every single hole, I mean, these were mountain courses out in Colorado. So by far the biggest issue was uphill, downhill, side hill. And uh, I mean, it, it was 90% of the putt. And, you know, we found ourselves really struggling because they were dramatic from, from shot to shot. And then, you know, I look back at, you know, some of the drills that tour players do, and I know they go to an undulated part of the practice putting green, and they will go downhill, then uphill, downhill, then uphill, and the whole Mickelson thing around the hole, because I can't emphasize enough that it's such a small, if, if you're really talking about fast greens, if you're downhill or uphill, I mean, it's it's completely different. It, you could, if you take your uphill uh, stroke on a downhill putt, you're rolling at 25 feet oh, by. Absolutely. And I saw a lot of that. Yeah. And, so, and I think that's part of getting yourself used to it, right? Is like, we like to go hit putts on the putting green and we're judging over making misses. It doesn't matter out there. Who cares? You know, you need to be feeling what the speed's like correct. for that day because at that point, you should not be doing any technical. You should be, who cares what, what, what the in, performance it, is on the yeah, putt. It's yeah. great to build your confidence yeah. with a few yeah, makes, yeah, yeah. but do yeah. that inside yeah. four, yeah. five, six You're feet. putting to a distance, though, Yeah. because downhill and uphill is just a completely different stroke. That's right. And I think when we go out there, a lot of times you see guys go out, they'll drop three balls, hit the same putt, and if they miss them, they'll draw it back, and it's a straight uphill or flat surface straight putt. Um, versus like, okay, maybe hitting some of those uphill, downhill, right to left, left to right, just to get the feel for what it was like. Like if you were – I always relate this. I don't know why, but like pitching cornhole or whatever. Yeah. If you pitched at the same distance, let's say it's out there at 21 or 27 feet, whatever the distance is, and you just pitch that the same distance, you know, to warm up the same – and that's what – it's stationary. Yeah. But then if I took it and I said, okay, I'm going to move it to – 10 feet and I'm going to move it back to 15 and I'm going to move it out to 30. You'd have a hard time feeling that. But if you practice that beforehand, you sort of get an right. idea of what all those different distances feel like. And I think that goes into a lot of on the practice screen. If you hit a lot of a variation of different putts, you'll be likely to have a better feel for what it's like when you get out there and you have one putt from 10 feet that breaks four, four feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever yeah, it is. yeah. Something else struck me, and Ted, I'm going to come to you in a second, but something else struck me this weekend was that – I found myself hitting tons of putts from off the green. I mean, like tons, you know, if I was in the fringe and, you know, because it was tightly mowed. So uh, anything from five feet um, within the green, I was putting. But sometimes they were really uphill and the grass is a little bit longer, obviously, even though it's tightly mowed. And I got to thinking, how often do any of us practice putts from off the green? Me never. You know, you don't. You don't hit that. And and I did the same. I was playing in a member 
let's see, what were we doing? I think we were playing in a member guest a couple weeks ago. We were playing, and in the practice round, the grass was a little longer, and I, my, my chipping needs some work. Um, and then when you don't practice it a lot. So I was like, oh, we'll just keep it on the ground and roll it. And I hit two or three putts, and I, I, was, I was putting pretty well the whole week, and or the weekend, and – I hit two putts from off the green that I didn't get it with inside 10 feet yeah. because it, you know, it just, it came out of there differently and I sure. didn't have the feel I would yeah. if I'd have probably yeah. put a little time in to what yeah. that's like. Yeah. But, um, but I think it goes into putting yourself in a lot of situations yes. on practice, practice so that you can take yeah. it to the yeah. golf course. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of time, but drop a few if you think you're yeah. going to putt it from off the green. Assess the situation, you know, and if you've got a, you know, sprinkler head in the way, then you're probably going to have to chip it over it. But put yourself in that situation on the practice green before you go play, absolutely. you're going to be more comfortable when you get out well, of there. I think that could be part of the reason why you might have been putting a whole lot, Jim, because you probably didn't feel comfortable chipping the ball because you haven't played a whole lot. Same so thing. the yeah. So the easiest thing for the most part yeah. to do is try to putt sure. it. Sure. But if you haven't practiced putting through the fringe, sure. then you're going to either leave it short or you can just yeah. pull it past the hole. So yeah. it's, you know, mm-hmm. practice, short game, yeah. putting, yeah. I mean, it, it's a big deal. Now, Ted, as a head golf professional, you know, 36 holes over here um, for many years, you know, what's your observation of your membership? Like, what was it just, you know, did everybody spend a really good time out there practicing their putting? Were you, were, did you see all the members out there or did you just see a real handful of them and you knew that, hey, those were the, those were the members that you really had to watch out for because they were, they were properly allocating their practice time? I mean, what, what was it like at, no, a, at a it, private it's club? It's just like a, a tour event for the most part. You know the people who come out and practice the putting and they take time. They have a routine. Uh, you know, before their round of golf, they practice um, – on their off day when they just come out and hit balls, they're practicing. And, and you know, a granted, it's just a handful of people. Most of the members didn't have time to do that. So it's kind of hard to say, well, I'm just going to come out just to practice putting when, you know, I have spare time, very limited spare time. I should be going out playing golf. So it's, you know, those people who practice a whole lot on the putting green who was going to do well in the member events and, have a good round of golf and for the most part weren't going to come in and complain after the round of golf yeah. that they they're missing everything you know or I need a lesson so practice just like anything you got to practice your putting and you got to have some type of method some type of system to do that and if you don't then you know you should expect the first six seven eight holes that it's going to be back and forth until you get comfortable with your putting especially on the, the different types of greens you might be playing. Now, Ted, one of the thoughts that I had was is that if you're listening to the putting couch today and if you're a golf professional, um, think about, and a lot of you do this, and I think it's great, is having clinics, you know, and whether it's a ladies' clinic, a men's clinic, a couple's clinic, but, you know, again, maybe that's the best first step towards people feeling a little bit more comfortable with spending time on their putting is, is having, a, having your pro um, or your director of instruction out there, you know, gosh, in just an hour, you can have a lot of fun and you can hit a lot of this stuff. So I don't know how often that happens, but it seems like, you know, from my perspective, golfers that go ahead and sign up for those types of clinics, oftentimes they may not sign up for individual putting lesson. They're not ready for that, but some sort of clinic might get them to, you know, go to the next level. Well, you know, they, they, they want something like that. You know, they want to have the option of, wow, I've been, this would be a good idea for me to go out and take this clinic, but there's really not, no one's offering that to me. But they have it in the back of their mind, yes, I know I need some help with my putting, but if the pro can take the initiative and say, hey, I've got a 30-minute, 45-minute clinic, sign up, and let's see how it goes, yeah, then yeah. that person, okay, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll go take that clinic and see how it goes. I think that's, I'm going to take that as a challenge to the three of us to maybe put together sort of a putting clinic uh, itinerary that some of our friends uh, and teaching pros out there and um, instructors can use because I think that's something that I find um, you know when you see somebody that's doing it on a regular basis you're like wow you know everybody's really having a great time and uh, and and they're, they're they're covering all these bases so well it's you know one yeah. thing it, not to interrupt but our old head pro he every Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 5 30 he made it known to people that he's going to be walking the driving range. Okay. So somehow, once word got out, 
That's what that practice. driving range got a little bit more crowded because he was out there yeah. just looking at the swing. Yeah. And, and so it's one of those things that, you know, maybe um, – from 5 to 5.30 on a Thursday or p.m., the, you know, the head pro, the assistant pro, director of instruction is going to be out on the putting green exactly. with his or her putter. Yeah. And if you have any questions, guess what? Come yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask me. Yeah. You know? So let's go to some of the training aids, you know, and some of the different – they're out there. But just what are some of the ideas and uh, either aids or they could be an aid actually that you purchase, a, a putting mirror. You know, we have some stuff on, on at, at Seymour.com. And, of course, there's other sites out there that have a lot. So where would you um, – you know, where would you start, Cody? You know, one of the, one of the tools I think we see a lot on tour that I think a lot of people can benefit from. Not only not a, a lot of players, not only on the golf, like on the putting green outdoors, but you can do a lot of this stuff inside watching, you know, watching golf or on the, over the okay. weekend. You got a little bit of time or in the office. So, you know, one of them is a mirror, right? One of the easiest things out there to purchase. You know, we make a CT mirror, which we love. You can see your shoulders in it. But what it does is it gives you great feedback on your setup, right? Where your eye position is, which has a lot to do with your posture tilt, the distance you are from the golf ball. Uh, in the mirror, the CT mirror we have, you can actually see your shoulder line. And then in addition to that, there's some lines on the mirrors that show you what the proper stroke path may look like. And then also how square your putter face is. So, the, you know, it can manage a lot. And I, we see a lot of really good putters use this because it helps them manage when they're putting really well this is where i'm at and then when they go to check out maybe when they're off they get on that and they look and something's changed you know how the ball position might have moved so their eyes are too far back behind the you know the putter head or you know whatever it is they're too far from the golf ball or too close to the golf ball now so it really gives them a great source of feedback and a way to recalibrate um by just setting down a mirror and getting it set up, hit a few putts. You don't even have to hit putts with it. You can take a few practice strokes, then rake in a ball, hit a putt, and just sort of watching when you go through your routine and get set up, where is that putting you each time? And then that's, I think that's probably a great place to start yeah. is some type of mirror that can give you that feedback. And we see the guys out there, you know, Ricky Fowler or Zach, you know, those guys I see every single week that we're out there, they always pop it down. It may be for five minutes, yeah. but they pop it down, check, hit a few putts. Okay. We're good to go. And, and that's, I mean, you, those are, that's just a great yeah. way to ensure your setup is where you want it. That's the easy, that, that mirror is Unreal. Yeah. I mean, it helps my son that, you know, we tell him what we he needs to do, and then he's out on the putting green using that mirror and just checking himself, you know. And it, it it's it's just a, such a simple product, but like what Cody says, it handles so many things from a square putter face to making a natural arc. We even have indentions in there where you can actually put tees down, right, and then – once you have your tee down, you can remove the mirror and then still practice your arc and making a good stroke. And then the kicker is with the RST, the red dot's always hidden in yeah. the white line. Yeah. So you know you're making a repeatable stroke day in and day out. Yeah, I know we a lot of golfers out there buy it and use other putters, which is fine. That's what it's for. But the confidence that a mirror gives you when you can see where your shoulders are, to see where your eyes are, to see your putter face is square – it, and, and then you feel it in your body. I mean, it just, you're, you're a step above everybody else out there on the on the green. So what you're saying is is that the mirror, you know, is one of many, many um, uh, recalibration tools, as you said. And, and if guys, if the best players in the world who play golf almost every day and they practice for hours putting, and they still recalibrate every week. So what that says is, is that you can't just assume that a great putter is going to always be a great putter. You get there through hard work and constant revisiting. That's right. And then and reinforcing good fundamentals makes that a lot easier. And so when guys are putting that down and using that, you're you're make, you're ensuring you're practicing, you know, from a from a really solid foundation, from a perfect position. So, you know, if you go out and hit putts with, you know, too far from the golf ball or, you know, if you don't have proper aim, you can work in some bad habits pretty quick, and then you may adjust your aim to accommodate those habits. So here, you're hitting putts knowing that you have the setup you need to be in and the alignment, and then just ensuring you're having a good stroke. So you get that feel for what it's like to hit putts from that position. And the more you can do that, the more likely it is that, 
you know, the easier it becomes and the more likely you take that to the golf course. I would say that there's sort of three, <laughs> there's sort of three main uh, components, you know, in, in, in that's going to add up to your, to your, how many putts you take. Right. And I would say that, you know, the first, we had a customer in here this morning who's got a couple of Seymour putters and he said, you know, this Seymour putter has, made, has turned me into the best two putt putter in the world. <laughs> and he says, but that's significant because he says, I used to three putt every single yeah. hole. Right. And I think when it comes to three putts, most golfers, I think would, would, would have to look at their game and realize the three putts are killers, right? And the three putts rarely, um, I mean, alignment's important when it comes to three putting, but usually a three putt is going to be because greens are really big these days and you're not always hitting, you know, the ball next to the flag. So if you end up with a first putt of 20 feet or, you know, to 70 feet, right? I mean, it's really, yeah, you need to have a very general idea of, this is going to break a lot or it's going to break a little. And at that point in time, it all comes down to getting that speed, right? So three to two is going to be deeply um, connected to your ability to adjust to speeds. Right. And then, you know, alignment 10 feet and in, you know, that's when you're going to turn it into, you know, when you get that opportunity um, to make a birdie, you're going to do it. Or, hey, even, even on a... Uh, you know, on a 70 footer, you might end up having a 10 footer that you have to make to get that two foot, right? To get that two, two putt. Yeah. So it's, it's working in sort of all facets. You're going to, you're going to have the, uh, so many putts within that 10 foot range. So if you can get it in there, you're going to feel more confident, you know, and I think a lot of times, you know, when you're, when you're putting on the mirror, you can set it up on breaking putts too. So you, then you really start to get that, the read down to understand how high you have to hit yeah. your putt with proper aim and then the speed, like you're saying. So, you know, you can utilize it for a lot of different options out there, but all while ensuring your setups the way you need it to be in the proper position and you just hit, you're hitting putts from that. So I, it's, it's a great training. A couple would like Ted said the triangulator, you know, those are, you're reinforcing fundamentals and anytime you can do that, you're going to have a better opportunity to dial in your stroke without having just to go out and find a feel for the day. Yeah. Right. And you know, if, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're, it's the morning of the member guest, you know, every single person in the tournament is out on the putting green. So you can only do so much work at that point in time. But a lot of times there's nobody out on the putting green or not many people. And I think that's where all of a sudden from a speed perspective, Cody, what is a good distance? I mean, you know, you're out there and you've got the whole putting green to yourself or you've got a good part of it and you want to work on your speed. Are we talking about 50 feet, 40 feet, 30 feet, and how many putts? And, you know, what would what what would help get you there in terms of getting that feel? Yeah, I think that's important because, that, like, if you're using, like, a mirror or something, you need to be doing that inside 10 feet. Right, right. right. So Good that's, that's yeah, just – Yeah, that's a posture thing. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. you need to be doing that at a, at a shorter distance. But if you're working on speed control, if you can – you know, there's, there's a lot of drills out there, right? But 30, 40, 50 feet, tease at each one of those, you know, trying to get it within a three-foot circle – um, you know, it's a great drill. I mean, that's, that's so easy to set up, you know, but put a T at each one of those distances and that, and then go through, you know, three balls at each one of those, you know, you can, that way you can judge that distance and then you can play a game, try to two pot each one of those. Um, uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of different things you can do, but if you, as long as you set a T down and you hit three pots at each one of those, get it within that three foot circle, move to the next one, three pots, you'll start to get a feel for what it's like because you're going to have those pots on the golf course. You know, you don't want to hit 10 foot pots right before you go out and play in your member guess when everybody's on the green. And then the first putt you have is from 50 feet. You're just going to be guessing. Yeah. I saw yeah. Tiger um, at PGA Championship in Hazeltine a number of years ago. He came out and all he did was putt from one side of the putting green to the other width wise and length wise and tried to stop the ball right before it got to the edge of the putting green so within a foot or two mm -hmm. feet and that's all he did did that for 10 minutes 15 minutes and then on on to this practice round i think that's important you don't need a hole to do that right yeah. And, yeah. and sometimes the hole gets in the way of a make or miss thought process True. and you know that that way you just get in the mindset of rolling it up and okay, I took this length of stroke, here's how far it went on these greens, because you may be playing a different course uh, than you're normally used to. So that's, I think if you, you don't have to have a hole to, to do all these different things. Yeah, if, if, you, if you watch, uh, so when it comes to long putts, short putts, um, you know, you're, 
two things you want to have happen. I mean, obviously, more, you know, on short putts, you know, it's really about dialing in. Um, obviously, you've got to have a really good feel for your speed um, and your line. And then you've got to hit the ball with the square putter face, yeah, right? Sure. And then the longer the, you go with the putts, uh, not only do you, have, do you want to hit it with a square putter face, but you actually want to hit it when the putter face is actually at the proper loft as well. Because if you're taking 50-foot putts and you don't have a good mechanism for making sure that when you hit that ball that you're, um, you have the same controlled loft on it, then you're going to be actually um, hitting putts with wildly different um, results because you're not going to be hitting it solid or square. And, you know, if you don't hit a 50-foot putt, um, you know, in the sweet spot and solid, it, it, it could be a disaster, right? It can maybe not even make it to that first hump right. in the green and it could roll off the green. And you know, we see that so many times. And back to the Seymour putter, you know, one of the things we talk about is with that rifle scope technology, you know, is a training aid. I'm talking about just a Seymour putter is a training aid right now. Even if you ever, you know, don't even have any thoughts about using it, what it does is it controls your face in terms of being square, but it also controls that loft. Because as long as you've got the um, red dot hidden, right, you're always going to have the putter face at the proper loft. Two and a half degrees and maybe the effective loft, depending on what you do with your hands, might go plus or minus a half a degree from that. But that is the best way to get great distance control. And, you know, a Seymour putter from a training aid perspective can really help you do that as well as get the line in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, a Seymour putter that I, I say a lot is it, it reinforces the putter training aid that you're using. Right. So if you're trying to, if you're using a putting arc or you're yeah. using uh, something else and you're trying to work on posture, you're trying to work yeah. on um, stroke or you're trying to work on uh, putter face being square, well, everything, think about that training aid that you presently have now and then now put a Seymour putter training aid in your hand and that just doubles everything yeah. that you're trying it reinforces what you're working on yeah and controlling loft and lie is hugely important in being able to turn the face back to square and hit the sweet spot so like if you're able to start it in the same position and return it back there most of the time you're doing a pretty good job of controlling those two and that what that means is you have more face awareness or stability in the potting stroke because you're not using the hands and wrist a lot to change all these different angles. That's when it becomes big issues, right? You change the wrist angle, then you add loft, it shoots it up in the air offline. You know, that becomes quite difficult. So utilizing the potter and then you can, you can put it on some of these training aids. I mean, there's some great ones out there. There's some cheap ones that yeah. $2.50 cent ruler that's, yeah. you know, three feet long. See more putter up against the back of the ruler with yeah. a ball sitting on it. Make sure the putter face is square. Hide the red dot. Hitting some putts down the ruler. I mean, cheapest drill in the world. Yeah. Our, our training aid. And it's going to teach you what your ball's doing off the putter face because if it gets offline. But what it is teaching is that you at least have to start it down that ruler on every putt, right? So whether it's a three-foot putt or a 50-foot putt, you're at least getting it started online. Well, what's, what's, your, what's your stat, Cody, with the uh... – Alignment off at imp or at impact from ten feet. Yeah, what is yeah, that? One like, degree is two point zero nine inches at so, ten feet. So if that putter face is open just a hair, right? One that, degree. I mean that's you're your, miss it. right. So then yeah. all of a sudden you start manipulating yeah. that stroke with your hands. That's right. And then you're going down that path. And I think you know one of the things that that we've talked about on many of our podcasts, but it's it's critical to to bring back here is is that the natural putting stroke is does have some arc in it, okay? It's got a very natural, subtle arc in it. And depending on the posture of the, of the, of the player and, the, and where their hands, their preferred hand position are, the arc might change a little bit. But unless you're holding a broomstick and dangling it straight down, um, it's not a square to square. And so we talk a lot about the fact that, you know, if, if a golfer right off the bat feels like the proper way to putt is square to square, then they're gonna find themselves actually fighting physics and manipulating and so when I think about something like even a ruler drill sometimes I get concerned that you know they need to understand what we're talking about with the ruler is is that your perfect putting stroke will will come back to the ball with a square face and the ball will roll down the ruler right we don't want the yeah. the angle of the stroke to go square down the ruler no. because some of the great uh, aids out there to show golfers that natural dynamics of an arc putting stroke there's the putting board there's the putting arc right there almost all of them show that 
you actually want to let the natural, uh, the fact that you're standing to the side of the ball, right? So talk a little bit about that and how that arc stroke, because I think that's important in, in fighting the golfer's natural tendency to try and be square to square. Square to square is just something you hear over and over and over and over. And on short, fast putts, you know, the putter face is only moving a couple of inches. It absolutely looks like it's square to square. When you're, when you're the golfer, it looks like it's square to square because it's square to your plane, but That's your right. plane is a curved plane. Right. And I think there's, there are two great aids that give you the visual for that. So a lot of players, we use these in the studio there to give you a visual guide for what it's like to make sort of a natural art. Now, like you said, it, it's just a way to manage your shirt. You'll understand what your tendencies are. You may go a little stronger, a little, um, a little more, uh, a little less of an art than, than some, but one of them is, I mean, and there's different types of these, our portable training mat, which is, you know, and there's other types of mats out there, but what it shows you is it's, you're able to sit it on the ground, very thin, you're able to hit putts off of, but it shows you what the natural art looks yes. like relative to the target line. Yes. Then in, in addition, it shows what your putter face does relative to that path. So it's a phenomenal visual guide for showing you what a natural stroke path looks like. Now, again, yours may come a little bit more inside or a little straighter, but it shows you that the putter swings up into the inside square, back up to the inside. It's sort of a perfect practice because you can start to understand a lot of your tendencies. For players that have that mindset of straight back, straight through, that the putter's moving, this can get them to get out of the thought process of that and get out of their own way to make a more free-flowing stroke that helps them keep the putter on plane longer. And I think the training mats that are out there, there's several of them, I, you know, I love ours. You know, you, you roll it up, throw it in the bag. You, you can put tees in it for a gate drill, but it, it can manage so many different things. And stroke path and face rotation, those are big parts because I think people hear those terminology straight back, straight through an arc, and then they over rotate under. This just gives them a great yeah, guide. Yeah. And then you put something like the putting board, not everybody has access to one of those, but if you do, you know, that, that's a great tool too. Um, you know, it, and it just gives you an idea for what the putter's like for swinging it on an incline plane, but what the putter's actually doing. So those two things working together, because like you said, anytime you tilt the plane, you're gonna have to have some natural rise and rotation, which can create a small arc. You know, you're better off using those as a visual guide, let those do the work, but not ever thinking really about no. how you, you're controlling no. the putter straight back, straight through, or this rotational arc. Yeah. But those are phenomenal training aids yeah. to give you, you know, just sort of a visual guideline yeah. for what's happening in the putting stroke, I think. Just stick, hey, just stick the butt end. I mean, if you probably don't have a belly putter lying around anymore, but just stick the butt end of your putter right into your sternum and get into your position and just, you know, reach down to wherever you are on that shaft and just let that thing move with, with an anchored point against your sternum and you'll see how the putter face naturally comes up off the ground as it comes into the backstroke and comes slightly to the inside. It comes back down at the bottom of the arc and it's dead square and then it rises up again and slightly to the inside. So um, it's important for golfers to know that straight back and straight through, that, that visual image will cause you to start really manipulating your hands, pulling the putter too low, and, 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 and really it will create a situation where you've got a lot of variables are going to have to come into play in order to get back, right? The idea, some golfers hear, well, arc is a little bit difficult for me. And at that point in time, a lot of golfers are thinking, well, arc means I'm going to manipulate it with my hands, right? I'm going to actually open my hands. I'm going to fan it and flare it. And I've got it. And, and that's manipulated as well. What we're talking about is almost everything in between, which is just, you've got one plane, you're tilted. And if you watch that putter stay on the plane, same as, uh, it's, a different, it's a different plane, but your driver swing, oh, your iron swings, I mean, those are not straight back and straight through. Those are on a natural arc, mm -hmm. your natural arc. And so as long as you follow that, that's the straightest you can be in reality with no manipulation. I, yeah. t I tell some students, you know, hold your grip, putter grip, and then act like I'm putting duct tape around your hands, right? So then when, that, when your shoulders, you're moving back, you're not turning your hands, you're not moving them down that line. They're just going right with the sternum of your, your body there. Yeah, and that's, I think that's where, you know, you can get, like those mats give you a great visual, but if you don't have, the, you know, access to that, you know, take like an alignment stick. So like what you're talking about putting it in the belly, you can yeah. take an alignment stick yeah. and put maybe like a little padding over it and put 
one part of the alignment stick on the back of your putter, put the other one in your sternum, and then grip your putter. Oh, yeah. And what that does is that gives you a feel for what it's like to create that connection and that suspension point revolving around one position and just allowing the putter head to swing. And those are such a – I mean, that that's another – you know, you can get – alignment sticks uh driveway sticks at lowe's for yeah. three dollars yeah uh and and those can be used for ensuring your feet and your body are aligned and then having the proper ball position by creating a t on the putting green so those have a lot of great uses as well well and then and then it all is reinforced by the I, the ultimate putter training aid is that seymour so you're doing that the stick and then all of a sudden you're making sure those white lines are seen and you know now you're you're, you're going to be putting a little bit more consistent when you go out there on the golf course. Well, great discussion today. I, I appreciate, uh, you know, again, uh, all of our listeners here at the Putting Couch, and we, we try to hit on relevant topics. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We, 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 you know, we've had some really good sessions just doing Q&A, and we'll always do that. Um, looking ahead, we, we, you know, we're going to dive into – um, deep dive into you know what a real a really um, intense putter fitting would be like. I mean, without being intimidated, um, you know, if, if you really want to go and get it all, you know, um, we, we've got some ideas on that. We'll talk to some guests about that, and uh, I will always also get back to the mental game. I mean, you know, we haven't even talked about that, but there's mental drills as well. Best thing I can say though is is that you know the only real way that your putting is going to improve is to also dedicate some practice time you know to your putting meaning maybe it's not right before you tee off you know because you get there and it always comes down to well what do you fear the most you fear not being able to get off the tee you fear not being able to hit your iron square and all of a sudden time's up it's time to go on the golf course so you know if 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 you look at what the college players do you look at what the junior players do and the tour players do they've got certain dedicated mornings or afternoons where you're just bringing one club out there Mm -hmm. and you know, Payne Stewart did that when he won the U.S. Open in 1999, um, where he just put it. He just took a Seymour putter and he did take a couple of wedges out there for the first two days of practice. That's all he used. So, um, going back to your 66 percent of shots from 100 yards and in, he was like, "I'm just going to go out there." So, isn't that crazy? He didn't bring his full bag out there, um, according to Mike Hicks, his caddy. I wasn't there, but I mean, he Mike was there and what talks about it, and so just talks about the intense. Uh, uh, the the dedication that he had to just using that putter on the actual all 18 greens. Yeah, I'd say challenge yourself to start when you go hit balls for an hour. Go hit it for 45 minutes. Put 15 minutes in, and then may work yeah. it to half of that yeah. in your short game, and you'll start to see improvement. And then you can you can, you can do some of these things at you know at the house or in the office or when you have some spare time is to go hit a few putts. I work with a guy in here all the time. He's a great player, and uh, and he he spends most of his time doing his work at the house and just hitting putts off of some type of you know a little training aid or a little mat at the house that he has. So, you know, challenge yourself to put a little bit more time in and you'll start to get more results. Fantastic, Ted. They can contact us uh, anytime with any questions. Or, anytime, yeah. 24-7 yeah. at yeah. info yeah. at Seymour or also on our social media sites. Love to hear from you. Uh, feel free to reach out, share this uh, with your buddies uh, that you think that might need a little bit of help on the putting greens. And um, we'll see you next time. One day at a time. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to The Putting Couch. We appreciate you joining us. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do wherever you're listening. Be sure to leave a rating and review because that's how we get the Putting Couch podcast content in front of more people. Also, take a screenshot and share it on social media and tag us at Seymour Putters or hashtag Team Seymour.